What's up guys, I'm Spencer24 Sony. This is part two of my Star Trek 11 review. Okay. Well, a, kind of a big problem I have I had with this film, well, it's pretty much with prequels altogether, is that, it's, especially if the, if the main characters are the same, because you already know that they're going to be okay. You already know that they're going to be fine. So, there's really nothing that's going to put you at the edge of your seat. That's at least the case with me. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I um, don't want to watch Wolverine, because the stuff that, that happens, you know it's going to end up okay. You know it's going to end up alright, because you've already seen this character in the future. It's just not really... Sometimes the past in movies are better left not really shown, just told or mentioned, because one thing, showing them really doesn't have that much of a point to it, and for another thing, it's, if you don't really see what happens in a character's past, it kind of gives them a more mysterious edge, it just kind of works better. Sometimes in movies, what you don't see can, um, just improve the story, just kind of, you might, you might appreciate what you don't see because you can just kind of imagine it or think that it must have been really good or really bad. And for another thing, it's not really worth it if you already know what's going to happen. Um, I did not like the little green alien dude. I don't imagine why anyone would. I mean, he was just completely pointless and stupid. I didn't like the main female character. I mean, for one thing, they kind of make it look like near the beginning that she and Kirk are going to get together, and they just don't. It, and she she and Spock are together. I mean, you don't really know that that much about her, and the, the, whole, the scenes between her and Kirk, I mean, what was the point of them? There was real no purpose in, in the scenes. They're just to kind of throw... Th it, it just seemed like they're just trying to throw you off and make you think they're getting together, and that's just kind of... it's just kind of stupid. <laughs> I did not like the villain. I thought he was really underdeveloped, and I could not care about him at all. He was just a, another stupid villain. Because usually in the Star Trek movies, the villains are at least a little interesting, and you start to care about them a little bit. Though there's, their intentions are always dumb as crap, you at least start to care about them a little bit. But this character, not only were his intentions as dumb as crap, but he just was underdeveloped. I mean. His, what he was willing to do was pretty much get revenge, destroy the Enterprise. Oh yeah, never heard that one before. That was dumb. There's one big problem I had with the movie. Spock's father. Okay, it, he's, so he got married to a, a woman, and that's why Spock's half-human. That, that makes sense, I guess. And near the beginning he says he married her because it was logical. That makes sense because these alien pony haired species guys are aren't don't have emotions. Spock is an exception because he's half human. So him saying it's illogical, while it's kind of dumb, it, it it's it's the it's these species. That's what they're like. And then but then later on in the movie, just for the sake of making the scenes more dramatic, he s claims that he um, married. Spock's mother because he loved her. That's not possible. If you're this pointy-eared species, pointy-eared species that has no emotions, you can't love someone. And why the heck did he not tell Spock that before? Why was he lying to him? And before telling him that um, it was he married her because it was logical. It just I mean, that didn't really make much sense to me. I don't know. Maybe I missed something. I like the humor and I like the dialogue pretty well. The beginning was a little, meh, but the, the the mostly the middle was really good as far as the scenes and the dialogue and the character development. But the last twenty five percent of the movie, I didn't feel anything. It was just it wasn't good and it wasn't bad. It wasn't really that good of a climax. It just um, nothing, everything was kind of predictable, uh, slightly. Nothing really big happened. And it didn't really have that much humor or wit that the 
first 75% of the movie had. It just wasn't really all that to me. I didn't really like the first 20, the, the final 25% of the, of the film. Another little problem I had was Kirk, Kirk's um, ambition, ambition and his, the, his main goal. It, his main goal was to become his father, to be better than his father, but that was it. Throughout the entire film, that's all he's trying to do, become better than his father. He does that, but I think that a main character, notably Kirk, of all people, should have more deeper emotions, more intentions than that. It was just that one simple intention. And I didn't really like how he really fast went from this lazy, self-centered, woman-liking teenager to this big captain guy that suddenly wants to follow his father's footsteps. I, mean, I just didn't under... If he didn't care before, why does he suddenly care now? I mean, all, all that happens is this guy comes to him and pretty much tells him what he already knows and dares him to uh, um, follow his father's footsteps. That didn't really work to me. I mean, it, I'm not saying he really changes fast. I mean, he, he's still kind of an idiot when he's in the when he's on the Enterprise and he's slowly changing. They did a decent job of that, but it just I, w I wish they put a little bit more into the character, basically. Uh, I like the Le Leonard Nimoy role in the film. It didn't really... One thing that really got me... One question I really had was at the end. Where he's he's in the past. The the older Spock is in the past. How's he gonna get back? They never tell you. I, I maybe I missed something. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't understand that. A lot of people complained that it was too long, and I heard it was like two hours. It didn't feel like two hours to me. It felt like an hour and a half, and I didn't feel like I I didn't really want it to end. It felt like it ended too quickly. All the little things they were doing, it felt really good, and then it just kind of ended, and I didn't, I didn't see it coming. It was like watching a really good, long movie that you were drawn into, that had all these really good things set up, and then leaving the theater in the middle. That's, that's what it felt like to me. Uh, just, I guess I should say that it didn't feel long, even though it was. It, it, I didn't get bored. So... Yeah, I thought the movie overall was... Okay, one more thing. I didn't like the death of Spock's mother. They tried to make it real sad, but this is the character that you met in one scene, and then she dies. It's just... I didn't like that, because I just didn't care about her, and that didn't work. But uh, overall, I liked it. I felt it was a little overrated, but I think that's because the reason why a lot of people good reviews was because their expectations were low and they're just blown away because it was actually good but since my expectations were actually high after reading the positive reviews that's why I kind of see this movie is just okay it's okay I'm gonna give it a 7.5 and that's that's high 7 point high 7.5 is really good really impressive for my rating so I don't think it's worth watching more than once, but yeah, you know, get your family, get your girlfriend, get your boyfriend, whatever, you should go see this film, whether you're a critic or a Star Trek fan. I'm Spencer 24 Sony. I'll see you later.